start, Stuart, if we can, with the uh, final thoughts on, on Nottingham to Derby defeat in Mansfield. But said after the game that you took quite a lot of positives from it. What, what did you take from that game? I think the real positives were the first half. I think the way that we come out and performed and the chances that we created. I think if you, when you reflect on the game and watch it back, I think a fair scoreline would have been going in possibly 2-1. I think their goal was, was a top finish from their lad from the edge of the box that there's not a lot we could do about. Uh, but I think if you if you gave us those chances again within that game, I think we take them and I think we go in possibly 2-1 up. So I think it's a really positive performance all round. Yeah, so it's fine margins, I suppose, isn't it? The fact that Mansfield took their chance and not, just weren't able to. No, definitely. Look, it, it was a really difficult fixture for us, uh, A being the derby, but the pitch in the state that it was in when we turned up. Uh, obviously, a lot of pitches at this time of the year now with the weather, the way that it's been, are in that condition. But I thought the lads to perform to the level that they did and control the game in the way that they did on that surface was, was a huge credit to them. Yeah, I'm pleased with even the fact that, obviously, going away to, to Mansfield Town, that your side managed to stay in the game, even right up until the very end. Yeah, look, I think that's what we showed within the game and we said to the lads, I think within games like that, especially when you're playing Mansfield, they've only conceded 24 goals. They've got one of the best defensive records in the league. They're probably the best pressing team, high press, that come and get after you up the pitch. I thought the lads managed the game really well and took that away from them. And But what we showed was that real grit, that real determination to want to go compete and make sure that you was up against your man and you come out winning your duels. And I think that we did that on the day. I suppose it says a lot about uh, your, your side defensively uh, on, on Saturday that it took a lot of real quality to get through. No, definitely. I think that's that's where they are, Mansfield, and I think they're at the top of the league for a reason and they're in the automatic spots for a reason. And it's, it's a huge thing within football if you can base success on clean sheets, you have a chance of winning games of football and I think that's what they've based their structure on this year. And I think we've shown now in the last few weeks, our last two games, that how defensively solid we look. We don't look as open now and teams are not really opening us up and creating good chances. So it's a huge credit to our... It's a whole squad. Like when I first come in, people were going on about the back three and, and defensively it's not. It's a whole team collective and collectively as a group now, we're looking structurally more solid. Yeah, that's something that you want to continue to try and rectify as, as games go by. No, definitely. Look, I think it's something that we've got the attacking players. If you look at, we're one of the top goal scorers within the league. Uh, and I think we look threatening as well. It's not like we've taken away any way of our attacking intent. I think now we just look structurally solid now. When we go forward, players are within those positions to stop counter-attacks and they've been excellent. Yeah. Have you done anything uh, different like day-to-day in training to sort of make, make the players defensively look a bit more solid or is it just <clears throat> those little fine tweaks? Yeah, it's exactly that. It's, it's, it's just the tweaks behind the ball in way, the way that we attack, in the way that we overload teams now, that when someone comes out of a space, someone's coming into your space and it's the organisation behind the ball to make sure that we stop counter-attacks on, on us. And I think the lads have taken it on really well, considering we've only been in the building for a couple of weeks. I think they've really taken on the info excellently. Yeah, has that surprised you a little bit, the fact that obviously the things have changed quite dramatically in the last couple of weeks, that they have taken on board a lot of information? No, I think when we looked at the group before we come into the building, we, we were really excited of working with them and I think they've kind of given us exactly what we thought and that's the whole squad. The lads that potentially haven't had the game time that probably that they would want at the minute, uh, depending on the way the games are going, that we haven't been able to make those types of subs. But in training and everything, they've all performed to a very high level and we've got a really competitive squad now. So it's not just about the starting 11, it's about everyone as a collective, that we're all in it together and everyone's kind of ready to come and take their opportunity when it comes along. Yeah. Uh, Jaden Warner started in the, uh, in the dark. How do you think he fared on his, on his debut? Yeah, I thought he made a really solid debut for a young lad to come into that kind of atmosphere. Look, he's been exposed to championship football, so he's kind of had that exposure to the kind of atmosphere, but it's not easy to come into a derby game, especially against Mansfield, and make the game frantic. But I thought he was very composed on the ball, and I thought he defended excellently. Yeah, and what, what did you take from it? I'm not sure if you've, you've managed in many derbies, uh, but in terms of a, a local derby and lead to at that level, what did you uh, what did you make of the atmosphere and the occasion itself? 
I thought our away fans were incredible with, within the whole game. I thought they backed the lads all the way to the end and, and it showed that the lads left everything on the pitch so the fans at the end, they stayed behind and applauded the lads off, which I feel they deserved. Look, we're all disappointed that we didn't get the result that we wanted, but the actual performance level was very high and, and it's a huge credit to our group, lads. It's a huge credit to the fans to stay behind and clap them off and that's, that's kind of what we've seen within the fan base so far. Within the two games, have been so positive with the lads because the performances have been positive. Yeah, and what have you learned about like your players day to day uh, since you arrived, Stuart? Look, they want to learn. They're hungry. They're winners. They want to win games of football. When we draw a game or we lose a game, they come off with the same mentality that they're disappointed, and then they come again on a Monday morning. And that's all of us wanting to learn and trying to correct it and make sure that we improve for the next game. Uh, I want to ask about uh, Alessandro Data. Um, just wondered if his visa's come through and everything is all okay for him to play and possibly feature on Friday night at home to Gillingham. I don't think that he'll be available for choose for Friday night at Gillingham. The the process is still going going on. I don't know exactly where we're at with that, but look, it's a huge positive that it's getting closer and closer for us to getting him in the building. Yeah, it's be a, a bit frustrating for you though as, as as a manager not to have that extra or possibly have that extra attacking player at, at your disposal. No, I think as, as a management team we don't really look at it like that. What, what we look at is what we've got in the building and we're happy with what we've got in the building. When we bring players in, it's to push players to make sure that we try and demand out of everyone within the squad to get to a higher level. And that's what we're looking for, that when he comes in, hopefully it raises the bar of everyone within the squad and that's how we look at it. Yeah, we've made a uh, billion this season, uh, close, to a, close to a playoff place, have sort of turned the corner a little bit, haven't they? I just wonder what you've made of them, what kind of test you're expecting on Friday night. I think it'll be a tough game. I think every game in League Two is tough this season. I think everyone structures slightly different within how they approach games. But look, they're, they're a physical team. They're very good on restarts and we're expecting a very tough test. I asked uh, Aidan Baldwin this uh, a couple of minutes ago, but with, with it being seven, still in the, uh, in the playoffs, of course, but a lot of teams like Gillingham are starting to catch up a little bit. Are, are you and, and other players... Sort of looking over your shoulders a little bit or is it sort of a case of focusing on yourselves to try and push higher up the table? Look, we focus on ourselves and we go one game at a time. The The biggest game was Saturday uh, against Mansfield and that's gone now so the next biggest game for us now is Gillingham on Friday night so it's a game that now we focus on them and we don't look beyond that. We don't look at any other fixture other than Gillingham. It's, it's solely focused on making sure we prepare ourselves right to make sure that we can try and maximise the points that we can get from the game. Well, Stuart, I wish you well for Friday night. Thank you very much. Thank you very uh, much. Talk to you soon. Thank Take you. care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Stuart, Jody Jones nominated for Player of the Month for January by the EFL. What have you made of, of him so far in his time working with him? Yeah, look, you come in, he's got so much quality. And what's a huge credit to Jody is that how now that he kind of he stayed fit, which has been great for him. If you look at his career, he's always performed to a very high level when he's got on the grass. And this is a huge credit to our medical team behind the scenes that people don't see that goes on the way they've managed him now. They're getting him on the grass training every day and he's performing to a high level and he's getting the rewards and he deserves to be nominated for this this award and I think he deserves to win it. I know I'm going to be a bit biased because he's our player, but I really do. I think for someone to have the amount of assists that he's had and the level that he's performed this month, I think he really deserves to win it. Those inverted wing-backs, um, they nearly paid dividends in the first couple of minutes, didn't they, with Aaron the main getting down that left-hand side and whipping it in. Uh, Jody seen a shot blocked and did he then seen his own shot blocked. Is that something that you're going to keep under your hat and potentially use more throughout the season or was it particularly specific to that game, do you think? It was for that game. I think that when teams come man-for-man man press with us, I think, like I said before, it releases the press when we can play a straight pass into them and they can open the pitch. Uh, so it's definitely something that we'll be looking into and... We look at it in the sense that every game's different. We have to make sure that we prepare tactically in the best way that we feel we can win the game of football. And we thought on Saturday with the wing-backs on the opposite side, we thought that it could take away their press and allow us to have control possession. Of it. And, it, and it worked within the first half. I thought we created a number of chances from it. Jody was excellent. Both wing-backs were excellent within it. And it's, it's a little bit foreign to them because they haven't done it so much this season. But I thought they adapted and took it on really well. Charlie Colkett, not in the squad at the weekend, had obviously only trained once and it was a light session before uh, before the match day. But what have you made of him in your short time working with him so far? Technically excellent. He's, he's a little bit different to what we have in there and that's like when we brought him in to the building. We, we knew that we had something a little bit different to our other midfielders and like we said, we've brought him in to kind of compete now to get into the team and into the squad. 
and he's coming in he's trained excellently we've just got to get him up to speed on the physical side because he hasn't played a lot of minutes in recent so we can't rush him too much yeah you mentioned obviously with the medical stuff with how they've worked with Jody over the last 18 months or so however long he's been here um, is, is it going to be a similar process with Charlie in terms of getting him in the building really sort of helping nurture him and get him to a position where he's going to be able to contribute more? Yeah, you're spot on. There's, look, we look at it in a, in a different way sometimes. We're not bringing him in to rush him to, to kind of use him in the short term. We look at it as a long term. Uh, we need him with us now between now and the end of the season to help push us to the, the end goal where we want to get. So, yeah, we've just got to make sure that physically he's ready to co to cope with it. You're getting more and more into a position now where fit players are going to have to be left out of the squad, which obviously is a, is a tough decision, but I suppose it's the nice end of the problem to have you instead of scrabbling around for players. James Sanderson, Junior Marias, we haven't seen them in squads over the last couple of weeks. What's the latest with them? Yeah, look, they're training really well, and, and that's the key now. We're, we're starting to get players back fit that, you know, like it is. It's, it's the decisions in management that you don't want to make that are tough decisions because they're all competing for, for very few spots but they've trained very well. So we've just got to make sure that we pick the best squad of players for each individual game. And that could change on a week to week basis, depending on what we feel we need from the bench and what we feel within the starting 11. One of the most competitive areas of, of the team now is, is the defensive area. Now Lewis Macari's back, Richard Brindley and I missed out through injury at the weekend. Aidan Baldwin in fantastic form. Kyle Cameron obviously playing consistently as the skipper. You know, there's a lot of options there now. And I suppose with a lot of games coming up, a lot of Saturday, Tuesdays, yeah. it's going to be a, a case of trying to keep your place but also maybe needing to give way for rotation at times. No, definitely. Look, I think there there will be periods within the back end of the season now where we'll have to freshen it up and see how people go but it's about managing the lads now. It's about, like I said, with the medical team and us as a management team, managing the lads well in the week to make sure that when we get to the weekend they're fresh and that might mean some sessions they might have to step out of in the week to make sure that we're all fresh and ready to go. But look, we've got really good competition for places now. Louis come back into training. He's been excellent in training, so it's, it's really good competition. We've just been speaking to Aidan Baldwin, and you know he, he said himself that he's probably playing some of his best football in a not shirt. You'll have watched a lot of him before you came in and started working with him. I just wonder how much you've enjoyed watching his performances so far under you, but also working with him compared with maybe what you've seen previously in the season, because he's put in plenty of good performances throughout. Oh, definitely. Look, he's been outstanding since we've been here in the two games. Like He's performed to a really, really high level and he's been seriously consistent. He's made blocks when he's had to. But with Aidan, where he's so brave, he receives the ball in them areas that you need composure and he has it. He's got a really good footballing brain. He knows and identifies what you need within them moments within the game. And look, he's performed to a really high level and look, we hope that he can keep doing it and we're confident that he will. Working with him every day, he seems to like get better and better every day he trains. Positives to take from the two performances and under you so far, but I'm sure you're as keen as anybody to get that first three points on the board Friday. Definitely. I think it brings a feel-good factor to everyone. I think it brings belief. I think it starts to build momentum at this stage of the season that you need to build uh, to have a push to get in and around those playoffs and push as far up the league as we can. So, look, we're, we're looking forward to Friday night under the lights. I think when there's games under the lights, it brings that little bit of extra zip to the pitch and that little bit of energy, we just got to make sure that we perform to the level we have and we know that we're going to win games of football if we keep performing to the high level. Thanks, Joe. Over to you, Jordan. And in terms of Gillingham, they're a side that play with lots of width, lots of wing play. Is this a game where you're expecting your wingers to be up and down the pitch with lots of energy and lots of pressing? Yeah, look, they play 3-5-2 and we play with wing backs as well. So you kind of, in those wide areas, you end up against your man. I think defensively, we'll try and pin them back so that we don't have to defend as much and that's the way that we play with controlled measure with the ball but yeah they've got a lot of athleticism out in those wide areas that they are a threat and they're, they are a side that at times can struggle against counter-attacks this is a game where you think a lot of the game leans on whoever get, makes the most out of the transitional plays I think in the last probably three to four weeks have tactically changed a bit from that. I think now they've got a very good defensive low block. After the first phase, they're very aggressive in the first phase. When there's restarts and goal kicks, they come and get after you man for man. I think once you break through that first press, I think they, they go into a low block, which they're very good defensively now. And I think you've seen that in their recent performances away at MK Dons. And I think with your last previous two games, obviously you've got to hit the post uh, against Mansfield, but it's been 11 shots with 
one or two on target. Is this long-term vision of the project uh, understanding that that will just be a case of the system or do you think if you are more clinical on the day, these these will turn into goals or are you expecting to, to start getting the side to take more shots and be more clinical as well? Yeah, look, I, I always look at each game merits in different ways. We've just played the best two defensive teams within the division and that's why they're second and third in the league. So I think they restrict you to efforts on the goal. I think they try and defend to show you where they want to go. If you look at the the home game against Barrow, we crossed the ball 27 times and had some really good moments from it. I think you do need to be a bit more clinical. And, and like I said earlier within the interview, if those chances fell to the, the players that they fell to, I, f I expect them to score on another day. These things happen in football. The biggest thing is we keep getting in the right areas and that's the biggest thing you've got to be prepared. And it's brave to keep getting in the, the right areas to miss chances. And I think that's what we have in the top end of the pitch, that real belief. We're the top goal, one of the top goal scorers within the division for a reason. I think we've got unbelievable talent within that top end and it will come at some point if we keep performing to the level and getting in the areas that we're getting into. And lastly, how excited are you to kind of play at home this Friday and hopefully get three points on? How eager are the players as well to get that first three points for you? Yeah, I think there's there's a real buzz about the place. I think this week in training, I think they come out of the Mansfield game, the initial thought after it is huge disappointment, but I think the lads can see the positives from it to go to Mansfield and with it being such a tight game, especially after the home game getting beaten 4-1, I think they come out with that real hunger and belief now and they're just excited. We've got a group of lads that are hungry and want to achieve and keep improving. So now they're looking to improve and improving now on our last two performances to try and get the three points. And, how, and last one more question. How much does that show of the character of the players where you're not getting the win but the players can still see the vision and the idea and style of play that you're wanting to to put in. Look, I think I think a huge part of it is performance levels. I think when you're performing badly, uh, there's a lot of negatives come out of poor performances. But I think when you're performing to a high level, which the squad of players have performed to a high level all season, it's very fine margins within certain games. And if you look at the the last two previous games, it's very fine margins. In the Mansfield game, we probably should go in at half time two one up. It's a totally different game when you come out in the second half. In the Barrow game, they went 1-0 up and we showed great character to come back and get the equaliser. And then in the second half, I think we was camped in their half for pretty much 45 minutes and was unable to break them down. But you've got to give huge credit to the opposition at times. You can't just always look at it as us. The opposition have a part to play within these games. And I thought both oppositions within the two games that we've played have shown why they're at the top of the league for a reason.